Hey, well, there we are. Hey, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Whenever you're watching this, uh, the cool thing is um, you can watch it whenever you want. Amen. You can uh, come on uh, in, the, in the morning or in the evening when you're not doing anything. and um, Or a month down the road, people can come on and watch um, the word uh, being uh, brought to them. And I'm um, just a... Uh, just, uh, thankful for the opportunity to share God's word and uh, whatever little or more it is, you know, we're, I'm always looking to glean something from God's word and um, uh, start praying. Usually Sunday night, I start praying, God, what do you, what do your people need to hear? What, what do you want me to share? And, you know, because, um, you know, sermons may not be for everybody. But they're for somebody. Sometimes it's for everybody. Sometimes uh, I've heard somebody come up. Somebody came up to me one time and said, "You know that word was just for me." Well, if it was, and I, I'm, I just praise God for that. But uh, you know, I'm just thankful that uh, He does speak and He knows what you need to hear. And uh, uh, all week I've just been. Um, um, just, just a weird sermon going through my mind, and it's not even a sermon. Just going to share some things this morning. Just going to share a couple scriptures. If you just want to, uh, just listen, uh, just share for thirty minutes or so, and see if we can uh, both glean uh, something from God's word uh, today. Uh, just a reminder: we are on uh, Fridays. We're on. Um, uh, Pastor Rob is always sharing something on Tuesday nights. Pastor. Uh, Peg is on Wednesday nights and uh, Sunday mornings at 1045 is usually when uh, the preaching starts on Facebook Live. So anyhow, if you don't have a church to go to or if you just need something in the middle of the week just to, to uh, keep your week going, uh, just uh, listen in and I'm sure God will speak to your heart about something that you need to hear. So anyhow, uh, today I want to just ask you a question. This is what's been going through my my mind all week. A question that I have for you and me, Amen. Because I can't I can't preach it to you unless it some does something to me. So the question is, uh, what do you think of God? What do you think of God? Um, one of the most important thoughts that you can have in your life is what do you think of God? Because what you think about God will determine, number one, where you spend eternity, and number two, uh, it'll determine uh, how you would live your life here on earth. So what do you think of God? Uh, if you think he's just some invisible, impersonable idol, you know, that you can't see, you can't touch, you can't feel, whatever, you know, um, you'll be thinking, well, uh, since I can't see God, you know, I have to do this life thing myself. And um, I have to make my own path in life. Um, and I think because um, we don't have the knowledge, we don't have the knowledge of God. We don't know about God, so we don't think about God. Um, there's a, there's a, so what does God want with me? What, what are his plans for my life? And if you don't know, you're not going to think about God and ask him. There's a, there's a popular scripture. I'm sure you all know this when it's Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, listen to what it says. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. So God, God has a future. He has plans for everybody's life here on earth. But most people think, well, I have to do this myself. You know, I'm a, I'm a self-made man. You know, I'm a self-made millionaire or whatever, you know. And so they don't even bring God into the equation uh, and see what he has for our lives. So what, what do you think about God? Are you thinking about God? Is, is he even on the radar throughout the week? And listen, I'm not only talking to non-Christians today, but, but Christians as well. 
You know, are, are every day are you thinking about God? Are you spending time with him? You know, and is, is he on your agenda every single day? Do you have plans to meet with God every day? Um, well, I hear, I hear, well, I don't see God. I don't feel God. But the Bible says that, that his invisible attributes are clearly seen, says in Romans. So God is seen everywhere. Uh, we see God in everything and everywhere. There's a scripture I want to read, and I want to read it out of the Passion Translation. I know you'll like this. Uh, it really helped me. Uh, listen to what Psalm 19, verse 1 to 6 says in the Passion Translation. Listen to this. It says, it, the, the title of it is, is God's Glory in the Skies. God's Splendor, verse 1. God's Splendor is a tale that is told. His testimony, testament is is written in the stars. Space itself speaks his story every day through the marvels of the heavens. His truth is on tour in the starry vault of the sky, showing his skill in creation's craftsmanship. That's just verse one. Verse two, each day gushes out a message to the next, night with night, whispering its knowledge to all. Without sound, without a sound, without a word, without a voice being heard. Yet all the world can see its story. Everywhere its gospel is clearly read so all may know. What a heavenly home God has set for the sun, shining in the superdome of the sky. See how he leaves his celestial chamber each morning? Radiant as a bridegroom ready for his wedding, like a day-breaking champion eager to run his course, he rises on one horizon, completing his circuit on the other, warming lives and lands with his heat. So, so God, his, his, he's everywhere. You know, you you can say, well, I don't, I don't see God, I don't feel God, and but he's everywhere. And I can guarantee you, I can guarantee that you, you have met with God. Even if you're not a Christian out there, I guarantee you God's hand has been upon your life. And we're going to look at that just a little bit. But that was the Passion Translation telling us God's uh, handiwork is in the heavens. It's in the heavens. Christian or not, Christian or not, there's proof God exists. Uh, is, is the is part of the problem that we haven't been taught that it's true. Listen, I, I didn't go to church. I didn't go to Sunday school to be taught it's true. But at 23, I gave my heart to God and, and believed he loved me and, and wanted to show me his love. And I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad he convicted my heart that, that he loved me and he, he, he wanted me. Uh, did I have full knowledge of who he was? Uh, no, absolutely not. You know, I was, I was about as green as you can get when it came to um, uh, Christianity. Um, but it wasn't about what I didn't know in my head. It was what I did know in my heart. I knew in my heart uh, that when God saved me, that there was a God. And that he loved me. Um, my heart was was fully his. Maybe my head was was still a little screwed up, and I didn't understand a lot of things. Um, so, is it our thought life that can keep us from knowing God? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, a lot of it has to do with how we were brought up, how we were raised. Sometimes not. Don't get me wrong, because I I didn't. You know, I didn't, my parents didn't take, take uh, us to church. Now, we had a, a, a two-week um, uh, good news club in the summer uh, from a, a, a family that was right behind us. Um, so I did have, you know, the little bit of knowledge that, that there was a God. Um, but the lack of knowledge maybe kept me from knowing God more and deeper. When I was um, 
at a high school, um, for some reason, uh, I would drive my car around and uh, I had this uh, uh, radio station on the radio in my car. And don't get, I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't a Christian, but, but the radio station was out of Chicago and you could only get it at night. It was W. It was WCFL out of Chicago, and they called it Super CFL, and it was a Christian station. For some reason, for some reason, I had to listen to that uh, that station at night, driving around in my car. And you know, was that a seed that was sown in me for for the future? I think it was. That God spoke to me through music. Uh, I'm, I'm not a musician, and and. Um, uh, I don't have a great voice, but God spoke to me, I believe, through that music, and later on, he saved me. Um, but look, I, I don't understand everything about God. You know, you, and I hear that all the time. Well, I don't understand why God did this or why he didn't do that, um, but I'm still learning his ways. I'm still, do, it, does it get discouraging at time? Does it get disappointing at time? Yeah, absolutely. But you know what? When you know that God loves you, know that God has a plan for your life. We just read that in Jeremiah 29. And God has a good plan for our lives. Does it, does it always feel like it? Does it always line up with what we think should happen? No, absolutely not. But God has a plan for my life and he has a plan for your life. Even if you don't know God, know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that God has a plan for your life. Amen. He has a plan for your life. Listen to uh, uh, Isaiah 55, another familiar scripture. These aren't scriptures that you, you don't never heard of. Listen to Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9. Listen to it. And this is in the New King James. God says, for, I, for my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As the earth heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So God's thoughts and ways don't always line up with our thoughts and ways, but he moves us by his spirit and by his word to where he wants us to go. And it's a great thing. It's a great thing when you're when you're connected with God and and you you seek God and 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 all of a sudden he's he's leading you down this path that you maybe you never thought you would go down before. Maybe it's a a, a job opportunity or maybe it's whatever, you know, you fill in your own blank. But God has a plan and a purpose for our lives and and we really need to seek him for that plan and purpose. Um, the question is, the question is, I hear, uh, why do I need God when when I'm doing good on my own? And and the 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 that's the point on my own. See, you're when you're doing things on your own, you're 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 doing things on on what you think is best. There's a scripture that we looked at a month or two ago. It's in Proverbs. It says, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not under your own understanding. So we, we go too many times about by what we think our understanding says to go. But maybe that's not the direction that God wants us to go. And it all comes down to trust, doesn't it? All comes down to we, 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 we can trust a God that we can't see. We can't, well, well, physically see a person. Someday we will. Someday we will in heaven. Um, uh, the, the point is, uh, we're never alone. Amen. As, as being a, a Christian, you, you're never alone. Uh, and part of the problem, I keep saying this, maybe part of the problem is that we have this... Uh, computer between our ears uh, called a called a brain and just like a physical computer whatever you put into it or download into it that's what's going to come out of your computer uh, so our, our thoughts 
our thoughts can be either downloaded by by the world or they can be down god downloads things as a way to some people put it into our into our thoughts and it goes to our hearts and and our what our, what the problem is is same with me when i got saved you know i knew nothing about god i'm telling you when i got saved i knew nothing about god so my mind really had to be transformed romans 12 2 talks about that Tr being transformed by the renewing of your mind so that's what happens when we become a christian what we do is we renew our mind and our mind becomes transformed and uh, I, I still remember uh, one of my pastors standing on stage and talking about this and talking about and he used the the uh, illustration of uh, a cartoon remember the what was on tv transformers where they would turn from a from a truck or a car or a motorcycle into there's even movies out about transformers into uh, uh, robots or into whatever but they they look completely different than they did before and that's what our mind does that we when we renew them renew our mind in the word of god you know we get transformed we get changed thank god i'm not where i used to be amen but but i just thank god where he's taken me through his word and by his spirit and uh, led me to where i'm at today where i'm at today um so our minds get transformed by the renewing of god's word the question is the question is what would happen if if we wouldn't turn on our computer nothing would come out would it same way with our minds what if we're not turned on by the word of god you know god's word wouldn't come out what if what if we would only get a little piece of god's word every sunday morning and not during the week uh, uh, good stuff wouldn't come out we wouldn't know god the way we we need to we need to read god's word throughout the week amen so um uh, listen listen before i became a christian um it was all about me number one it was all about me it, it was so it was a big thing it was a big thing for me to put my trust in god and a god that i couldn't see amen because listen i was so self-centered uh and so about me uh, i i'm i'm shocked that god uh loved me and wanted me and saved me forgave me of my sins but the more I learned about him after I uh, gave my heart to, to Jesus Christ, the more I learned about him, I saw that number one, he loved me. Number one, he loved me and I could trust him. He loved me and I can trust him. Did it happen overnight? Absolutely not. It, it's, it was a process and it's still a process till I got home to heaven it's still a process of learning that God really, really loves me with a love that I'll, I, I just n never understand, I think, until I stand before him face to face. Amen. So, but it, it's, it's a, tell you, it's a lot like a marriage. Your, my relationship with God is a lot like my relationship with my wife. You know, the, the longer, uh, you know, you can say, well, I love you and I want to marry you and all that. But but you really don't know a person until you live with them, until you till you know them and get to know them, uh, walk with them, grow closer to them. Uh, and then what? Trust is built. Amen. Trust just isn't given. Trust is built. You know, we have to earn trust a lot of times. And with God, we, we, we learn to trust him when we read his word and read that god is good amen and then we we walk with him and we experience we experience god's goodness and and then we learn to trust him more and more every single day listen there's a there's a pastor i really like maybe you've heard of him uh and i mention him a lot robert morris uh he's at a da gateway church out of dallas texas 
And um, when he got saved, he was a he was not a very nice man. And he he he'll tell that right in front of the fifteen thousand people he's preaching to that he had a lot of he had a lot of baggage. And um, God saved him, and uh, he and his wife uh, started living for God, and they they started listening to God and. And God would say, I want you to give that, your car to this person or whatever. And one day, uh, God said, I want you to give it all away. The, he, Robert was a, was a young guy. He was a traveling evangelist. Didn't have much money anyhow, but God said, I want you to give it all away. So Robert gave it all away. And he looked at him and Debbie, what are we going to do now? And all of a sudden, the phone rings. And on the other end, this, this man said, uh, God spoke to me and he told me to give you something. And Robert thought, well, good, he's going to give me a car. No, he said, no, God told me to give you an airplane and pay for the gas, the pilot, everything, so you could get to your uh, 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 evangelistic crusades that he was having as a young person. So, and then God started giving him everything back that he gave away. But the thing is here that, that he knew God enough that he could trust God. He could trust God. And that's, you know, that's such a big thing. And I think that's why a lot of people don't think about God because they don't know if they can trust him. Amen. But the more you spend, just like a marriage, the more you, you spend time with them, you know, you know, you can trust them. Amen. Um, even through your tough times, even through the easy time and the tough times, you know that you can trust God. It, it's not like the Israelites. Remember the Israelites, God delivered them out of bondage and God uh, supplied all their needs, you know, everything. They, you know, and, and they were going through the wilderness and all of a sudden things didn't go the way they thought they should go. And, uh, you know, what did the Israelites do? They, well, all of a sudden they wanted to go back into bondage. They wanted to go back to the Israel. Well, we should have, we could have died back there instead of dying in the wilderness. But see there, God proved that he was good and he would take care of them, but they didn't trust him the way they needed to. So, uh, you know, it took them a lot longer, longer to get to the promised land than it really should have. Um, but again, again, it's like a marriage. You, you trust that man or that woman um, that you're married to uh, and you go to them right away because of the trust factor that's built up. And uh, the same with God, because trust is a big thing with God. You know, we often don't think of it this way, but God trusts us. God trusts us with, with everything he's given us. Um, and and um, the good thing is we can go to him anytime and uh, know that he listens and he hears us. But God trusts us. You know, we're, we're told to trust God, but God, God trusts us to share his word to people. Amen. God trusts us enough to share his word with other people. But it's, it's what we think of God that really determines that, that level of trust. Do we think God's going to come through? Or do we think God's not going to come through? Well, this is an awful tough thing. I'm not sure if God's going to come through in this one. But you know what? There, there's nothing too difficult for God. There's nothing too difficult for God. Um, the, and there, you know, there's a lot of questions and valid questions that that the Bible answers. Like some people, how can a loving God, if God loves us so much, how can a loving God send people to a place, if there is a place, called hell. How can God send a loving God, send people to hell? And then and the answer, obvious answer is, God doesn't send, send anybody to hell. Yes, there is a hell. The Bible talks a lot about uh, Hades, about hell, but God doesn't send anybody to hell. You know, he, you, you, you cannot go to heaven in sin. We send ourselves there because we reject the plan of salvation and the forgiveness of sin that Jesus Christ came to earth, 
went on that cross and died and gave his life for you and I, that we can be forgiven of our sins. So see, we, God doesn't send people to hell. We do ourselves by, by not receiving him and his plan for our life. Um, and if you don't, heaven cannot be our final resting place because there's no sin in hell. Quite simply and easily, there's no sin in hell. And we sin as well. You know what? I've been a good person all my life. I didn't do that much wrong. I hear that all the time. But you know what? If you read the Bible, the Bible says in Romans 5 that we've, we've been born into sin, the sin of Adam. And, and that sin in our life needs to be, needs to be forgiven, needs to be uh, washed away. And Jesus did that on the cross. He shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. So, um, so we need to know God. We need to think about God. And, and why can't, you know, the other question is, why can't God, if God is God, why can't he stop the evil in the world? Why can't he do that? Well, you know what? Number one, he could. But God has given us this thing called free will. We're not a bunch of robots running around the earth. Uh, God wants us to freely come to him. And it's not his plan to have all this evil around the world and in this country. Um, someday, someday he'll stop it all. Someday he'll, he'll, he'll take uh, the church, the Bible calls it the rapture of the church. He'll take us out to be in heaven for eternity. Um, uh, and everyone who has placed their trust in him will go to heaven, will go to heaven. So the, the, the question I, I keep coming to my mind all week is, uh, what do you think about God? And why don't you think about God? Uh, if you're a Christian, you, you should be thinking about God all the time. Listen to this scriptures. It, it's, it's, a, it's in Colossians. Uh, it's an awesome scripture. Listen to this. If you're, if you're a believer today, listen to this. It's in Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 through just 3. Uh, if then you were raised with Christ, in other words, if you're a Christian, uh, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. We're supposed to seek uh, the things of God and, and Christ. Listen to verse 2. Set your mind on things above and not on things of the earth. Um, for you died, in other words, when we became a Christian, our our old man died, our sins are dead and washed away, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So as a believer, you know, we're, we're, our thought life should be constantly going to God and seeking God for his plan for our life. And everything, everything, every single day, God, what do you have for me today? Where are we going to go today? And who do you want me to talk to today? What do you want me to know? So, uh, you know, that's, that's the, um, that's the thing about God. You know, he, he speaks to us and he really, really wants us to speak to him. Um, not all, just on Sundays, but every day, but every day. Uh, if you're not a Christian out there today, what are you thinking? Well, I can't because I've been so bad. You don't understand what I've done. You know, God can't love me because of the things I've done. Uh, or I don't need God. You know, we hold our, we, what do you say? Speak to the hand. The ears aren't listening. But we need to think about God. Even if you're not a believer, God's speaking to you. I guarantee you that, that God is speaking to you because God loves us. He loves you just as he did me. Uh, listen, I wasn't a very nice person when I, when I got saved. And I questioned how God could love me from the things that I've done. But he, he does love me and he loves you the same. Um, he's given his, God's given his son to prove his love to us. The Bible says while, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
and the most famous 25 words in, in, in the world. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him will never die, but have eternal life. So God proved his love by sending Jesus Christ, his only son for you and I. And that's the good news. That's the good news in just a couple of verses that God loves you. He desires you. Listen, it wasn't my idea to get saved. It was God's idea. He pursued me. He wanted me. And in a crusade in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, you know, he, he got me because he loved me. And he had a great plan for my life. Listen, I'm nowhere near the man I, I, I used to be. And I praise God for that. I praise God for that. I, I don't know where I'd be without Jesus Christ in my life. And a lot of you out there, if you're a Christian, you could say the same thing. I know you could say the same thing. All because of God's love. All because of God's love. And he pursued you. He pursued me enough that I would bow my knee. And you would bow your knee to say yes to Jesus. To say yes to God. His love caught me just as it's pursuing and wants to catch you today. I hope you realize your need for him. Brother, sister, Christian, God loves you. He has a great plan for your life. Maybe you're discouraged out there tonight. Maybe you, you've, you've gone a different path. Maybe you've gone a different way. You, maybe you've walked away from God. But you know, God loves you and God wants you and he's still pursuing you. He wants you back. And even though you run from him, you, you run from his plan for your life. He still loves you. And he still has a plan for your life. So what do you, what do you think about God? Do you think God's a good God? Do you think, well, because he allows all this stuff, he's, he's good sometimes and, and not good other times. No, God is good all the time. And even though things don't line up all the time the way we think they should, God's plan and his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So we might get mad at God. We might question God. And God knows. God knows our heart. He knows that um, that we're only human. A lot of people don't. Well, I'm just, I'm only human. And that's true. But God looks through that and looks down the road at the plan he has for our life. So we, we think about so many things. But our thought life should always go back to God. Because he loves us. And he desires us. And he wants us. So tonight, today, I just, just felt like, you know, what's, what's your thought life like? Are you even thinking about God? Well, you know what? Things are going good right now, so I really don't need God. I, I know Christians that it happens to, too. They, they, um, things are going really good, so all of a sudden, you know, I, you know, I don't need God right now. And that, that's a shame. That's, that's, that's not good. That's not good. Because eventually, eventually you're going to need God. And he'll be there. And the neat thing is, he will be there for us. And um, that's the great thing about God. So tonight, what are you thinking about God? Think about him all the time. If you're a believer, you know, your thought life should be, you know, what does God have for me? God, what do you want me to know? If you're not a believer, know that God loves you. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And he wants you to come to him. Give your heart to him. Because he has a great plan for your life. A hope and a future. That you, you'll be amazed what he has for your life. So I challenge you in that. And I hope you receive this. Uh, just short word. And uh, I just hope you have a great night. Great weekend. Hopefully see you in church on Sunday. Uh, if you don't have a home church. You know, Elisha's Home and Ministry Church starts at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. We go maybe an hour and a half, 
but uh, we have great fellowship, good word that comes forth. And um, I just look forward to seeing you or seeing you on Facebook Live the next time we're on. Anyhow, be blessed and have a great weekend in Jesus' name. Amen.